So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media Interview, broadcast and recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and American League baseball capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. If your name is Renee Seiler, this is probably a pretty good week. In the midst of preparing to co-host BET's live TV coverage of the January 20th inauguration of Barack Obama, it was announced that Seiler, a former co-host of the CBS Early Show, would be returning to regularly scheduled television programming as host of a news show, Live Large, Spend Small. But that can't be any more entertaining than the show she does now on her Facebook video log. Here. Listen to this. Close the door. We're on the air. Hey, Tim. It's Renee here from Good Enough Mother World Headquarters. And uh, i got to say, this is the first day that I've actually kind of really wanted a glass of wine. We are on now, what, day nine. We're on day nine. And um, I can taste that beautiful Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley that's downstairs in the kitchen calling my name. No, 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 I will not go. You know why? Because my jeans felt like I was wearing piano wire around my waist today. Look, I, I, I've been dieting and exercising like a banshee. Yes, I know it's only been a week and a half. But still, the fact is, I thought I'd pull these jeans on, and they'd be like, whoo, get, come right on, and no, no, I still had to do the, you know, the dance. You know what dance I'm talking about, ladies, you know, the, you know, across the room and laying on the bed, sucking it in, and then you get all the blubber into the jeans, and you just feel like crap. <laughs> You feel like complete crap all day. And then all you can think of is, I hope I don't bust a button and it fly across the room and put someone's eye out. And you can't wait to get home. It's that same feeling like you can't wait home to get your bra off. Sorry, guys, uh, who are watching on Facebook. But just FYI, I do think brassieres were invented by men because they are medieval torture devices. So, you know, you're, you know, Look, guys, we know when you come home, the first thing you do is you take your pants off. I'm married to a guy. I know. The first thing you do is you take your pants off. For us, the first thing we do is snap, snap. Woo! <laughs> well, here now from good, good, sorry, good Enough Mother World headquarters in New York City, Renee Seiler, welcome to Mr. Media. I will try it again. Renee, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Sorry, yeah. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Welcome. You can hear me, Bob. I'm here. I'm here. I'm in. I guess the reception's bad from Good Enough Mother World headquarters. I, I uh, yeah, I guess the satellite's not quite right over your house, maybe right now. But, uh, <laughs> we've got our technicians working feverishly to get this straightened out. Um, uh, anyway, our, I. I can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. One, two. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> I can't. You know what? I'm trying to log on and I can't. I can't get in the chat room. I'm so bummed. Oh. I, I'm. You uh, know, this is all. I'm come from old media, and so this is very confounding to me. So. It's. You know, my wife had this problem the other day. She was listening to, to a show. Um, I am told that the uh, easiest thing to do is yeah. refresh your browser. Okay. I'm gonna uh, do that. that. Sometimes, uh, and I've just put that message up in the uh, chat room because there are people there. Uh, if you if you if you tune in, I don't know why this is, but if you if you go to the web URL uh, before the show starts, apparently the audio doesn't work the same as if you go there oh. once the show starts. Oh. Uh, are you are you able to get into the chat room now? You know what I I, you know how it keeps saying it, it says register or log in. So I keep pressing log in and then I get the little beach ball and then it just stops. It won't let me log in. Oh. I know. I oh, guess I'm this sorry. is the best part about the about the blog talk radio, isn't it? Well, I mean, outside of talking to you, but I'm just saying, you know. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you for clarifying that. Good recovery. <laughs> 
<laughs> you are an experienced broadcaster, obviously. <laughs> yeah, right. Experienced in that I have put my uh, foot in my mouth on several occasions on live television and on the radio and know how to disengage <laughs> that. So it's good. It's all good. Huh. Well, uh, I- I'm going to... I'm going to hope that things will work out for everyone. I see that uh, some people in the web chat uh, are having that issue. It's not exactly yeah. the way I planned to start the show. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll go on and we'll hope that the world will catch up to us because, of course, we are steps ahead. You know? Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, <laughs> Whatever let's you get say. to the important stuff. <laughs> let's get to the important stuff, Renee. I hear, I hear that your skirt is blowing up. Oh my gosh! Did so? Did you saw the blog yesterday or the vlog? <laughs> now, how embarrassing is that? So I should tell the I, I should bring everybody up to speed. But I was I was meeting someone at um, a very public location in New York, AOL Time Warner Center. I had done Gail King's show yesterday, and I was and it was very very cold in New York um, yesterday. Of course, you wouldn't know this because you're in beautiful sunny Florida, um, right? Isn't that where you are? About St. Petersburg. Yes. Yes, oh, I am. Gosh. Oh, yeah. All right. So anyway, it's it's freezing this week here. And so I was trying to stay warm in, you know, AOL Time Warner Center, and I was standing over a grate a la Marilyn Monroe and with my mm-hmm. back to the escalator and countless thousands of people walking behind me riding the escalator. And I am so engrossed in my thoughts and looking out at Columbus Circle. And finally I turn around and some nice woman – sort of mouths to me, your skirt is blowing up. <laughs> and to think that I would not know that my skirt was blowing up. And for how long? Who knows? But um, after that, I thought, oh, jeez. Yeah. So that there you go. That's that's just a day in my life. That's just one of, of many days. Yeah. Like that. And did, did it make you feel any better? Because I also know that you've been you've gone back to the gym and you're working out. Did that make <laughs> you feel any better about your, the back of your skirt flying up? <laughs> A friend of mine said, well, at least it was a good view. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting there. You know, um, I was very, very sick at the end of last year. I had, um, and I'm a very healthy person, but for some reason I've had the last couple of years, um, you know, and I hate to think that it's um, age-related, but um, I got a very bad cold in uh, October, and it just didn't go away, and I ended up in the hospital with uh, asthmatic bronchitis. And it was just an, an awful thing. So, of course, when you have, you know, pneumonia or bronchitis or something like that, on that level, what do they give you? Steroids. And so mm. I was on prednisone, and I was on prednisone and a lot of cookie dough. Because <laughs> I can't blame it all on the prednisone. It was a lot of alcohol over the holidays, a lot of cookies, a lot of cakes, a lot of food, and prednisone. And mm. In January, I said, okay, it's time to pay the piper. And by this time now, I had secured the BET gig and knew I was going to have to be back on TV at the end of January. And I jumped on the scale, and I almost fainted. I had gained 13 <laughs> pounds, 13 oh pounds um, over, that, over that time. So I am on a very strict, very strict diet right now. Uh, that explains, I guess, the uh, the constant references to uh, the, the desire wine. for a cocktail and the wine. Yes. Yeah. Because you know all that is is just empty calories. That's just bad, bad yeah. empty calories. And then, and the, look, it's not like, you know, I'm not a teetotaler. I, I enjoy my wine. I mean, look, you know, good enough mother, one of our favorite times of day is wine 30. We talk about it all the time. But <laughs> I, But I have to, just for now, um, just for now, I'm going to abstain until I can get back in my jeans without them feeling like piano wire around my waist. And then uh-huh. I'll go back. But you know what? At the, at the end of the day, it really is all sort of in moderation. And I just kind of went off the deep end at the end of last year and I'm now trying to pull it all back. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it, so the, the, uh, the cutting back on the, or the cutting out the alcohol for now, that's, mm-hmm. see, I, I'm coming into this a little late and I, I didn't know if there was a, if there was another issue there, it was no. just weight related. <laughs> no, no, it's all just weight. It's just weight related. I'm just trying to, trying to pull it together. No, I, I, I enjoy social drinking, and you know, honestly, um, you know, I always say when I talk to my good enough mothers, you know, my mommies, we're, hey, we're all like, it helps 
you at the end of the day after you've done so much for everybody else to sort of relax with your glass of wine. And so that's what I do. And But the problem is at the end of last year, it was a glass of wine and a piece of pound cake. And they call it pound cake because you, you gain a pound every time you have a piece. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, you know, at the end of last year, it just was kind of crazy. So I had to, you know, I had to pull it together. And by the way, it's much harder as as you get older. Yeah. Really, I hadn't noticed that. No. (laughs) (laughs) It's not fun. It's not fun at all. Look, I just got off the stairmaster for a whole hour, a whole hour on the stairmaster. Uh, You did all that just for me. Thank you so much. I I did, and I'm I'm still sitting in my sweaty clothes just for you. (laughs) I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I can say that's going to be appropriate now. (laughs) <laughs> um, um, listen, folks, if you've got a uh, question for Renee Seiler, the author of Good Enough Mother and new host of Live Large, Spend Small, give us a call, one six four six five nine five three one three five. You can also submit questions via the live web chat that accompanies every Mr. Media interview on Blog Talk Radio. Um, Renee, you've really embraced the Internet, and uh, Facebook in particular, I think. Uh, this morning, I... I uh, I watched this video where you admitted that, uh, I guess this was from yesterday, that it was day 10 without a drink, and (laughs) if ever you needed a cocktail, this was the day. Um, When did the online media revolution really hit home uh, for you? You know, um, it's it's so interesting that you should say this, because somebody um, who's in old media, um, a news anchor, she said to me, wow, I really admire your um, your innovation. And I said, it's really interesting what you can do when you're forced to or pushed outside of your comfort zone. And so I would say all of this, you know, I had, um, when I left CBS, and, and, and I've been in old media for 20 years, and when I left CBS, I put together the website goodenoughmother.com, and, um, but still, I, I, I can admit, didn't really have a handle on how that had to work. You know, I had the book coming out, and I saw the book as the driver of, of the website. So the website, if you looked at it as a wheel, the website was just a spoke on that wheel. Well, mm-hmm. clearly we know it's exactly the opposite. The website <laughs> is the thing that's dynamic and changing and organic. And the book, once it's printed, is printed. And, you know, it can't be updated or, or, or that kind of thing. So I had to revamp and, you know, at a cost of, you know, more money. Um, and then after I revamped it and made that the center piece, then I realized, well, now everybody's going to video on the web. So I had to put a video player on there. So, again, I opened my wallet and another revamp. So, anyway, I'm finally where I think we're going to stay. Um, it's, it's good. We've got a video player on there, as you, as you know. Um, mm-hmm. I added a social networking arm to it um, using uh, the Ning website, and I have 210 women who come in and talk about sort of the just what modern motherhood is, and that's really what Good Enough Mother was all about, which was, you know, that it wasn't motherhood as wonderful and beautiful, okay, cue the birds and the music and the, oh, it's just great and blah, 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 but the reality is it's freaking hard, and and there are times that you, I did a, a vlog on this the other day, you love your kids, but sometimes you don't like them very much. Um, it, and, and the thing that I said in Good Enough Mother in the book and the thing that I really still preach is that, you know, I was a, a fully formed, self-actualized person before all of these people, my husband and my two children, came into my life. They are a part of my life, but they're not my whole life. I am different things to different people and when i call i call our um myself and our little followers gems because we are we're we're, we're beautiful and we're um um multifaceted and and that's the thing we, we do we have so many sides and we do so many things you know i'm a wife a mother a daughter a sister a niece an aunt i mean all of these things to all of these people so it's not that once i had my kids you know, my life was complete. No, I still have goals and dreams and aspirations. And that's what I wanted. Uh, I was trying to gather a group of women who felt the same. Hmm. Now, uh, your Facebook suggests uh, 
what a TV personality's uh, life would be like if they were a normal person. And you know, what do you know? You turn out to be a normal person. <laughs> You know, and that's the thing that's so great is about Facebook, and I, I didn't really get into MySpace, and I'm kind of, I, I, you know, I just, I just didn't go there. I now I'm moving into the Twitter stage, which is completely confusing to me. But um, all of these, this new media is, I love it because it's such an intimate way to um, get in touch with your audience, a way that you can't. Um, through traditional television or through traditional radio. Um, I, I did one of these shows, a blog talk radio show, last night, and it was so great to be in the chat room with people and talking and chatting and doing all. It's just so intimate and so immediate. When I, on the social networking site, the goodenoughmother.ning.com, I'll put a blog up and then all of a sudden people are commenting and I'm commenting back. So it's like we're having a conversation. And um, you don't get that necessarily from traditional media, voice of God, standing here delivering the news while you, the, the viewer, is accepting. You know, it's much more um, give and take and user generated. That's what I think is so fascinating about this next phase of the internet and and all these websites is this user generated content. So I don't even need to to monitor the Ning site as much as I I do, but I don't necessarily have to because it's now taking on a life of its own and there are people who join in and put topics up and everybody um comments on those. So it's mm-hmm. great. Well, let's uh, let, let me give out the website. Uh, the, the main site is uh, good goodenoughmother.com. That's solid. Mm-hmm. Goodenoughmother.com, and then the uh, the Ning site where you can join Renee's community uh, is goodenoughmother.ning n i n g dot com. Is that right? Right, right. That's right. And you know, if you can't remember the Ning web address, just get to goodenoughmother.com because there are links um, over to the Ning site. Um. Uh, what, where do you draw the line on sharing uh, your personal life? There is no line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that line was crossed a long, long time ago. <laughs> oh, how um, sad for you and your kids and your husband. <laughs> you know what, my husband, first of all, um, he, he, I kept saying to him when Good Enough Mother was in galleys, I said, you know, you should read this um, before <laughs> it's actually, you know, hardbound in case there's something in there that maybe you don't, feel like you wanted to share or think that yeah and did he ever read it no i bet he has never read good enough mother from cover to cover but that's okay <laughs> because then i can talk about him you know in it he i know he's <laughs> i know he's not going to read it with regard to the website and facebook and that kind of thing it kind of goes back to what you said just a moment ago that when you look at my stuff on facebook or on the web you're like well by golly she's a normal person Exactly, and that was part of what I was doing Good Enough Mother about. Like a woman once said to me in the green room at CBS, she said, um, I was on the phone during a commercial break with my daughter because I was not there in the morning, obviously. I was at CBS, and she would say, I, I said to my daughter, is your homework done? Are you ready to go to school? It's like 8.30. They're getting ready to go to school, and this woman said to me, wow, um, I thought that you would have had somebody else handle that stuff and I thought no I I didn't have these kids so I could abdicate responsibility um, (laughs) raising them to you know to somebody else and she said um, you know she was so impressed that I I was this sort of hands-on mom and I thought god that's so weird because clearly people don't have an accurate portrayal of either me or probably what I think a lot of us are like you know we're still moms and dads and everybody's just trying to do the best we can So what I had done was I wrote this book and I just said, look, this is us. This is, you know, we have, this is me. I do some things really well. I do some things really very poorly, cooking among them. Um, But this is me with all my warts and wrinkles and love me or leave me. And as you get older, you realize the ones who say, I'm going to leave you, you kind of are like, well, good, you know, happy trails. You don't care. (laughs) Which is chapter three, by the way, in the book called I Don't Care. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'll drop the plugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah right. uh, well, no, I just wondered. I uh, uh, 
Yeah, I've got a 12-year-old daughter, and uh, I mean, I make my living writing uh, magazine articles and, and, mm-hmm. and, and co-authoring books. And I noticed up until about two years ago, I could really get away with um, mm. talking about my kid pretty much, you know, within reason, anytime, anywhere, because it didn't come back to her, and she wasn't paying any attention to what mm. I did. Mm-hmm. And then there kind of hit hit a moment, I think when she was about 10, where suddenly it was, why did you write about me in this article oh. two years ago that I found on the Internet? Or why? Well, oh, why, why on the you, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that's terrible. <laughs> Savvy kid. Well, why? Yeah, or why, um, you know, I've listened to your show now, Dad, and why is it that sometimes when you start the show by telling a story, it's a story about me? I don't think that's very fair, Dad. <laughs> oh, no. So, so. Oh, dear. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, you know, um, my kids, uh, maybe because, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because people say, um, what do your kids think about you being on TV? And I'm like, well, I've been on TV since they were born, so they really – don't care. I mean, they, yeah. and they understand. And then, you know, they're on the cover of the book and they, <laughs> my daughter would probably be the one to say, don't, don't overshare. Um, but it hasn't happened yet. And she's hmm. 12 now. I, I bet it will happen. I, I anticipate, um, that it, it probably is going to happen at some point, but I still have my son for all that fodder, which is fantastic. He, my son who should have been named get down from there, you know, a crazy one. Well, maybe we could uh, send our daughters to uh, the uh, to a, a rehab facility for um, <laughs> embarrassing parents. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I should start saving now. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me uh, remind folks if you've got a question for Renee Seiler, the author of Good Enough Mother, and we're going to get to this uh, new host of Live Large, Spend Small. Give us a call at six four six five nine five three one. Three five. Um, let's talk about Barack Obama's inauguration. Mm-hmm. Um, you, as I mentioned at the start of the show, and I know a few people missed it, you will be one of the co-hosts on BET's uh, live coverage on uh, January 20th. How special will that day be for you? Uh, you know, listen, um, I think it's a great day for this entire country, but um, I you can't escape the fact that there is special significance for African Americans, and I think African Americans who are my age and and older, because we never thought really in our lifetimes that we would see this happen. Um, you know, as the mother of a ten year old boy, a black child, who I would say to him again and again, "Listen, you study hard, work hard, you know." keep your nose clean, don't do anything, uh, you know, stupid, and you can grow up and be anything you want in this country. And yet there was a part of me, and and I suspect other parents, um, African-American parents, who thought that this was unattainable for their children. To see Barack Obama um, take office, to become the leader of the free world, is, it's, you're speechless um, when you think about it in that, uh, respect. He, this man does have have a lot on his plate. Um, I think there's, without a doubt, this country's in in the worst shape that it's been in in a long, long time. You know, unemployment. The, the fact that we shed as a country 2.6 million jo- jobs last year, 524,000 in December, and November was was equally as bad. Um, you know, so you've got this skyrocketing unemployment. I think consumer confidence has been shaken to its very core. Um, we've got to repair our our image um, and reputation around the world. Uh, you know, I mean, it, he has a lot of work to do. And I think my hope is that people don't expect these changes to happen overnight. We didn't get here overnight. Listen, when you're pregnant, doctors will always say, because as soon as you have a baby, you always want to lose that 30 pounds. And the doctors say, look, you This took nine months to get here. It's going to take nine months to get back to where you were. I use the same analogy. You know, I mean, it it didn't take us a year or 20 days or 30 days or whatever, the first 100 days, to get to where we are now. We have some real deep-seated problems that we've got to um, get in there and and handle and untangle, and that's not going to happen in 100 days. So I hope Mm. that people don't think that as soon as he gets in office, all of a sudden there's this, you know, he places his hand on the Bible and immediately things get better. They're better in that, you know, perhaps 
you know, we, we've got a new direction and 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 somebody new in the White House and 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 um, a new view on things. But you know, it's going to take time. I, I I think things will get better not when he puts his hand on the Bible, but <clears throat> when he waves goodbye and says, "W, don't let the screen door hit you where this." You know, I think that's when things start getting better. Um, I've got more questions about the inauguration, but we have a uh, call. I want to get them in. How do you have a comment or question for Renee Seiler? Hello. Hello. Hi. Do you have did something you wanted to say? Oh no, I'm I'm just listening, and enjoying the show. Oh, all right. Well, we appreciate that. I'll uh, put you back on hold. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I love. All right. This. Well, I, I have to say, I love this block. You see what I'm saying? This is the stuff you would never. This never happens in, you know, in terrestrial radio. This is so great. I love it. It is. It is a different format. Uh, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Um, I can only it, imagine it's, it's, what it must be like on your end. Are you like an octopus? You got like. You're handling all these things, so you got one ear on me, and you've got an ear on the chat room, and you're trying to do all this technical stuff, and you're just one guy. Actually, I'm still back there thinking about how sweaty you were from your hours <laughs> workout. But, um, no, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's fun. You know, I, uh, I actually started, sorry, I started the show uh, and did the show for about a year uh, as a podcast where I used the digital recorder and the telephone, and the, the uh, blog talk radio people uh, had heard the show and contacted me and invited me to come over. And the first show I did was with a, a, a film, uh, independent film producer. And uh, I'm talking to the producer, and we got a phone call, and I was just blown away. A phone call? Who could that be, you know? <laughs> and it, it, it turned out to be the guy who starred in this movie. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm sold. How wow. cool is this? Wow. Um, that is cool. You know, you know, back to what you said just for a second, if we could just um, – um, if I could digress for a moment, you had mentioned, um, you know, now we're off the inauguration, but we can go back to the inauguration um, about this new media um, and how I had embraced it. That's the one real trick um, that I think is, is difficult for me is to try to get the word out. You have to break through the clutter of all of the stuff that people have um, that grabs their attention on the Internet. And I think you do, you do a really good job of utilizing your Facebook. And I, Are you on Twitter? Too? Yeah, you're on Twitter, and you use that bit.ly so you can shorten your, um, your, right. your blog or you're your right. web addresses. So, you know, that's the thing that I sort of struggle with is how all these tentacles and making them work in your favor. It's uh, it takes time. I'll tell you, it has not been. We're having a uh, the, the last six months have been great for this show. We've you know we've gone from averaging 200 listeners uh, a day and 200 downloads to anywhere from a thousand to two thousand a day wow. in the day. And uh, the the network has been very supportive, and we're getting great guests like yourself. And you know all that's uh, all that's good, but it's taken time. And Facebook yeah. and Twitter have definitely contributed a great deal to. Uh, uh, I, I had started off sending, and this is probably boring for everyone but you and I, but I had started off by sending out a, an email newsletter every week about guests and who was upcoming, and I found that that just ticked people off. Mm. They, they, they considered it to be spam and eventually stopped doing it, and I thought, well, how am I going to get the word out? And I actually found that more people were listening without the newsletter than with it. Wow. And, uh, Facebook and Twitter have just expanded on that, but uh, I, I, yeah, you know what I think? I think the newsletter thing makes it seem so formal, whereas this is just mm-hmm. more like, hey, two people chatting. We're talking about, and and I was having, I was um, talking to the editor in chief of More Magazine yesterday, and I was saying that I think that this whole Facebook, MySpace, all of these things sort of lend to the voyeuristic side of all of us. Uh, you know, and it all I think sort of goes back to reality television, where you were eavesdropping on people's lives. When you go onto Facebook um, and you're you become my friend, then all of a sudden you see my vlogs, you see my photographs, you see my status updates, you see all of this stuff. So you're sort of living, you know, uh, at least on the periphery, my life. And um, and I think that people like the spontaneity of that versus the real. Um, you know, like, you know, the newsletter and here's what we're going to do and, and that sort of thing. That's why I love it. I, it's so spontaneous. It's fun. You, you'll enjoy it. So uh, you, you did a show last night. Were you hosting the show or were you a guest on the show? I did. I, uh, a, a girl who is on um, Good Enough Mother, the Ning site, 
She has a, a site called the Cocktail Cafe, so she's a woman after my own heart, mother of three. Um, she and I and two other um, sort of young, hip mommies got together and did it. We call it Mom. We call it the Cocktail Cafe Show, and it, mm. it's called Mom's Night Out. And we had a blast. It was great. Wow. It's fun. It is it is definitely fun, and it's very easy to operate a show. Anybody listening, I encourage them to, uh, pardon me, give it a try. It's, it's, mm. it's very easy. It's very fun, and you can do it for free. Um, now, that, all that said, have, let's come back to the inauguration. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you written out anything special you uh, want or plan to say on inauguration day? Um, no, I have not. I have a couple of days, and I'll write some notes. Um, down, but this is one of those things that I think is important to be in the moment. It's going to be unlike anything I've ever um, experienced before. As I said, I I wasn't able to vote because I was in the hospital. So this is really, um, I I want to just soak in the whole um, atmosphere and environment. And I'm now, um, the, the, the actual location where I'm going to be is not overlooking um, the platform of the swearing in or the capital or anything like that. I'm going to be with the people at our main location, which is a, 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 one of the oldest uh, historic black restaurants in Washington called Ben's Chili Bowl. In fact, uh, President-elect was just there on Saturday with uh, Mayor Fenty. But um, access is extremely limited, as you can well imagine. Two million people, they think, are going to converge on Washington um, to see this and so it's it's very difficult to get around. And so we're going to have a split show. We've got Hill Harper and Jeff Johnson will be at one location overlooking the Capitol, and then I'll be at the other location, and that's where we'll be able to interview guests. It would be a logistic logistics nightmare to try to get guests inside the perimeter, move them around, and up to our location. So we took a place that was outside the perimeter. Hmm. Is it um... – <clears throat> I mean, no disrespect to BET, but mm-hmm. is it going to be kind of different uh, doing this kind of coverage with mm-hmm. a network that's really not known for this versus, you know, the years you spent with CBS? Yeah, I think so, yes, um, and uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, BET has covered inaugurations before, but not to this extent. They it, they know that. They admit that. Um, this is a big deal because their audience is primarily African American. This is a story um, that is of particular interest to African Americans. So, BET, um, you know, wants to serve its audience. So, yes, it will be different for them, and, yes, it will be different for me. I've never covered an inauguration before. And also, um, you know, we're talking about sort of the nuanced differences between cable and broadcast. But in cable, with a very specific audience, you know, you're speaking to your audience versus broadcast, which is sort of, you know, casting a wide net and speaking to everyone. So because I'm going to be talking to an audience that is primarily African-American, there are issues that we all share um, that I think we will be able to expound upon. You know, so, um, yes, I think so. We'll cover the facts, obviously. We'll cover the um, uh, the emotion, the issues. Um, but, you know, the coverage will also be somewhat aspirational because, again, it goes back to what I had said just a moment ago that now you can really say to your kids, you can grow up to be president and mean it. You know, the door mm-hmm. has been kicked open. I, it, it, it's interesting. Um, I, I was once a, a young white Jewish kid, and uh, I don't <laughs> think I have any uh, – I don't think my, my – if I had a son or, or my daughter for them, and I don't think they have any better chance now – of, of being a president, not that I necessarily want that for them, uh, <laughs> than they did when I was a kid. But it is, I mean, it is very interesting uh, the way it's the way it's all uh, happening. Um, what uh, um, what do you think uh, will be different about uh, BET's uh, coverage from, you know, say CBS or even? Um, HBO is going to cover it. Mm. Uh, how will it be different? Well, you know, I, I can't really speak to CBS or ABC or NBC, seeing as I don't know what they have on tap. But, I mean, with regard to um, to BET, I know that we're going to be talking, you know, we've got interviews with um, Louis Farrakhan. 
we're going to be talking about security measures, which of course all the networks will talk about because that's a obviously that's a an issue with with any president, um, and uh, so we'll be talking about that. Um, we're going to talk about the, the transition and the Obamas in the White House. We're going to talk about the legacy, some of the people who helped, <coughs> excuse me, pave the way for for Obama to to get there. We're going to um, talk to the children of uh, Medgar Evers and Malcolm X and, and Martin Luther King Jr. and, and get their thoughts. And I think that's a very um, a unique perspective on on what's happening. Um, you know, everybody will probably talk about you know the stars that that helped. Uh, you know, he was very popular among the the Hollywood elite, and um, so we'll talk about that. Um, yeah, you know that kind of thing. Um, talk talk some of his. Um, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> some of his uh, speech highlights as well, and those I think are things that you'll find on all all the networks. Mm. Have you met uh, uh, either of the Obamas? I actually have. Um, when I was at uh, when I was still at the early show. <coughs> <laughs> My lungs are still giving me trouble. When I was at the early show, he came in. Um, I don't exactly remember. Let's see. What, had he? I don't think he had announced his. No, he had not announced his candidacy. Um, but there was a lot of heat and light around him, and so he came in, and uh, and he was not with his wife, but he was with like a, a handler or something. So I did meet him, but he was sort of rushing in and rushing out. He, he was a busy guy, um, very charismatic, and just the time that I. Um, you know, was in the studio with him, and you know he's um, he's a, a very charismatic, charming, um, very very smart uh, man. And um, you know, I, I was fortunate to have that just that real quick um, opportunity to shake his hand. His wife Michelle, I had actually seen speak um, a year ago in January at the Trumpet Awards in um, in Atlanta, uh, but I did not get an opportunity to meet her. But yes, I did. Um, see her speak in person what do you think uh, life is going to be like for their kids especially you know as a parent yourself with kids in that age group mm -hmm. uh, yeah you know they, they're they're hitting this at the time you know if he if he goes whether he goes four years or eight years mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're going to be you know they're they're both going to be teens and more mm -hmm. uh what do you think well um, as a mother, that's one of the things, obviously, that you think about. And I immediately, you know, it, it, and if you notice, Michelle Obama, we had been trying to get an interview with Michelle Obama, and Michelle Obama said through her press people that she was really her priority was getting her girls situated and settled. And that's admirable, I think, and she, that's somebody who really has their priorities in the right place. Um, I think for the girls, obviously, there's going to be an adjustment phase. Um, uh, we moved to New York when my kids were four and maybe six or seven, um, five and seven, I think they were. Um, but, of course, we were not in a fishbowl. We were not in a media fishbowl. So I think that um, Sasha and Malia, who, you know, spent the last uh, couple of years on the campaign trail, not, not at all the time, but at some point they, you know, had an opportunity to go on the trail with their father. They know what it's like to be surrounded by the press and, and to sort of be um, – Live that existence, I guess, if you will. I, my, mm -hmm. my curiosity is to see if that is heightened and, um, you know, and how they deal with that. I know that with my own daughter um, and the girl, girls that she becomes friends with, you know, she becomes friends with these girls because they have um, things in common or they like each other for whatever reason. It might be a little bit different for the Obama girls because, of course, all their friends are going to have to be vetted. You know? Yeah. They're going to have to be not just their friends, but their friends' parents, the friends of their friends, you know, the friends of their parents. I mean, that, that to me is sort of unfathomable, but necessary. Hmm. That's just going to be tough. I mean, you know, it's hard enough to make friends yeah. and say, hey, why don't you come over for a sleepover? Oh, yeah. but um, first, yeah. you and your parents will be subject to a uh, yeah. security background check. Back, back I understand. Check. And, and a I understand detector. the background checks are running. Yeah, the, the background checks are running about four to six weeks. So if you can be patient. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a metal detector as you come through the doors. Yeah, tough. 
Oh, and, and, you know, God help the kid who invites one of the girls over to their house. I mean, I, uh, I'm not yeah. president of the United States or anything special, but I, I like to make sure that uh, there's no weapons available in the house yeah. before I send my kid. So, you know, uh, I you would know. imagine, I, I think I heard, and this, you know, you bring up a good point. I'm going to have to research this. But I feel like I heard that them say or someone say that they would not be allowed to go to a sleepover at someone else's house. And mm. it, when you think about it, 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 it makes sense, actually, because for obvious reasons, security reasons. How could you make sure that, um, you know, the neighbor's house is safe and, and you know, um, impenetrable? I don't know that you could. Yeah. Wow. That would be tough. I don't know what my, my, uh, my wife and my uh, life would be like without the occasional sleepover so we can have a night out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know what, though, but don't you love that Michelle Obama's mother is moving into the White House with them? So they'll still be oh, able yeah. to maybe go out, like like they could even have a night out, you know, and nowadays, not 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 anytime, not in the next four years, perhaps eight and then after, and then some. But the fact that Michelle Obama's mother is moving in with them, I think, will also help the girls because it it lends a sense of of, of normalcy to their to their sort of chaotic um, existence, at least chaotic for right now. Uh, I don't know, Renee. I'm thinking, hey, congratulations. You're the president of the United States. You've got to deal with, uh, uh, you know, you've got to deal with everything from the governor of Chicago to the president of mm. Iran. And by the way, um, every night when you come home from the office, your mother-in-law is going to be waiting for you. <laughs> I, you know. Okay. Well, for you and me, <laughs> Who, who live in um, houses that are probably normal size? Uh, that's probably you're right, an issue. But the White House, even the even the um, the uh, uh, residential quarters, I would imagine, are big enough that there's enough space. <laughs> you would hope. But I heard they got along very well. And there's that picture of them on election night where she's holding his hand. So. Yeah. Uh, well, and uh, you know, I mean, his and his grandmother passed recently. But you know, yeah. I got to say. Uh, my my mother-in-law, who, who passed just a few months ago, was a, a lovely lady, and she took very good care of me, and I and I and I, and I love her. But um, I, I always drew the line at living under the same roof, and yeah, I don't care I how you. big how big the roof is. Yeah, I know, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, um, I hear you, and and you know something. <laughs> my husband would be the same way. Yeah. I yeah, mean, he would not. He would not be happy. All that said, I think that's going to be a great gig for you next week, and uh, I can imagine yeah. that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I want to ask you, if you don't mind, a little bit about the uh, the end of your run on the early show. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever, and if you have, I, I just don't know. But have you ever talked about what really happened from your perspective? I mean, did you mm-hmm. did you see did you see the end coming? Um, yeah, no. You know what? Um, that, it's. As you know, television is is like this. And I'll tell you exactly what I knew. I knew that they were not happy with the ratings. Not not that they weren't happy with me. Nobody ever said they were not happy with you. I just knew that there was, you know, Sean McManus had come in as the new president. He had made it made it public his intention to um increase the ratings of the early show and of of the evening news and um that he all we knew was there were going to be changes. That was it. Um, on December, whatever it was, whatever fourth or fifth, I can't remember the exact date, but I was going over my schedule with my assistant, and there was a uh, a note in there that I had a meeting the next day with Sean McManus, and I was like, oh, what's that all about? Now I was just one year into a new contract at CBS, and so I went over to the meeting and got fired. No, I didn't know it was coming. Um, you know, shortly after I was fired, and I had told them, you know, because I'd had. Uh, I had a mastectomy two weeks after I left CBS. I don't know if you knew that, but I had. Yeah. Um, so everybody is always like, did they know that you were having the surgery? Yes, they knew I was having the surgery. But those events were mutually exclusive. They did what they felt they had to do. And, um, no, I was, I was, you know, pretty shocked, pretty blindsided. But, um, you know, it is what it is. When you When you have a job like that, you know that, and when you're in a position where the ratings are where they were for CBS, um, you know, ch- change is inevitable. Ch- and 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 after that happened, and actually I knew that before, but change is a part of life. 
like it or not, and, and you better learn to like it because if you don't like it, it's going to be a really tough life for you. But it is a part of life. And it's not sort of how it's, – it's not whether the change is going to happen to you. It's how you deal with it. And so for me, the last couple of years, it's been about positioning myself and saying, you know what, they did what was best for them. Now I'm doing what's best for me. Mm-hmm. But no, it, it, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I don't. I didn't keep it a secret. I, to me, to, to say, speak about it euphemistically. Oh, I was laid off or let go or whatever. It's like whatever. It's all the same thing. You got fired. There is no shame in it. I, I was not ashamed, you know, because I went in every day for four and a half years and I did the best job that I could do, and I am not ashamed about the job that I did. Um, I'm thankful for to them for giving me the opportunity, and you know it just didn't work out in their mind. So it is what it is, you know. I guess they were they were lucky in an odd in an odd way. I don't know. Maybe you think I'm crazy for saying this, but they were lucky in a sense in that you were you did go in two weeks later for the mastectomy, and you had bigger things on your mind. I think to. And yeah, stage and you know what? I mean, it was. Listen, there's no doubt about it. It was really crappy. The timing. Um, would I have liked to um, – because what what was so difficult was, to, you know, not only did I have the, you know, trying to recover from surgery, but then I had the whole, oh, my gosh, now what am I going to do? What am I going to do about income? What am I going to do about a job, my career, blah, 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 all of that stuff. So there was a lot – so they – there was that added um, element to my recovery, which was not fun and not cool. Um, and then um, – a couple of months later, I had to go in for a second operation, the final reconstruction, and it was just a very lonely, lonely time. And one of the things that I was trying to explain to people, um, I did Gail King's show yesterday, uh, because I have another website called I've Been Laid Off dot Ning dot com. Um, but but one of the interesting things about when you lose a job is you don't just lose your income, you lose your um, your, your social circle even if you didn't like all of the people you worked with at least you got up every morning and you went to work and you saw somebody and spoke or you 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 were not alone and when you are fired laid off furloughed show canceled whatever um you're alone and it's very hard that aspect of it Hmm. um you mean there were people you didn't like it at work i I, I Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Never. I'm thinking Julie myself. I <laughs> just, no, no, you stop it. <laughs> get up every stop morning it. and oh, let me let me tell you what those idiots on Big Brother did last night. <laughs> just for you, I'm going to give you a special scoop. You know, um, I, I I just have to say, I mean, the, the problem I always had with the show was there were just too many people. Mm-hmm. You couldn't, and that's you know, what I think. I, and that's why I got fired. Because I think yeah. they were like, there's too many people, so let's get rid of her. You know, mm. so may, may not have been the best choice. I mean, because um, <laughs> unless you um, unless you're going to turn it into the view, having that many people at one time, it's just. Uh, well, they uh, were yeah. trying something different because what they had been trying hadn't worked, and um, you know, I, I guess I you know, I don't watch the show anymore. I never wa- I don't watch morning television now because. Uh, as as we were talking about this new media, this is the direction I'm going. I spend all of my time online. I occasionally in the morning have the Today Show on, but you know um, that's that's pretty much it. Well, um, what can you tell us about the new show, Live Large and Spend oh, Small? Oh, I'm so excited about it. Um, uh- yeah, well, first of all, in order for me to tell you about it, I have to give you the context. And the context is this. Along with losing my job, having a mastectomy, I was also in the middle of a major house renovation. We live in Westchester mm. County in New York, and we have a house that's 105 years old. We took half of it down and added another 3,300 or so square feet. It was, you know, mm. it's pretty good size now, but it was um, kind of small. So all of this was happening at the same time. Um, but the house, because of its age and its character, I have decorated it using stuff from flea markets, church bazaars, tag sales, garage sales, um, you mm. know, wherever, I, stuff on the street. So when these people came to me, and these are the same people, I don't know if you've ever seen this show on Food Network called Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives with Guy Fieri. Oh, I love it. Yep. I yep. love that show. Okay, this is yep. the same production company. 
oh, okay. they want to do a show called Live Large, Spend Small. And I was talking to them about my life and my house and my just all of this stuff, and, and we felt like it would be a good fit to develop a show um, around me featuring um, the search for, you know, an, something to decorate your house that, you know, didn't cost you an arm and a leg. Personally, I think this is an ideal time given the economic climate. Um, people still want to have nice things, and they still want to have a house that looks like a home, uh, but they don't want to spend a lot of cash. People are really mindful right now of their pennies, and I think that this is this is a show that speaks to that. Hmm. And do we know when it will air? Or have you have you started on that? No, or? we don't. Um, we're still in development, and which means okay. it's still up for grabs. Anybody who wants it can have it. <laughs> uh, yes, um, at a certain price. Um, yeah, but you know what's great is that I'm moving into this. It, it, this is very different from anything I've ever done before. Not that I don't, you know, I, I'm sure it's in my within my ability and my skill set to do it. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, in fact, the whole Facebook and all of these things has branch. I've been able to branch out of, you know, from behind the desk into all these different things. And this is just another step in that direction. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. Hmm. Um, so we when we started the conversation, uh, you uh, use the term gem, and I, I know what that stands for, but mm-hmm. for those who don't, let's bring it all the way around. Uh, mm-hmm. A gem is a good enough mother, right? That's right. It's From the, the acronym for good enough yeah. mother is a gem. And and it, it works because, obviously, it's, it's, it's an acronym, but also because of what it represented. It represented this woman who was multifaceted and multi-sided, and even with its slight inclusions and imperfections, was still... Mm-hmm sparkly and shiny, something that got better under heat and pressure. All these things is, you know, that that's us. That describes all the women that are good enough mothers. The ones who, you know, the women that I, um, that I, I sort of, I, I call myself the head gem, but uh, <laughs> when you start the organization, you can call yourself whatever you want, but I call myself the head gem. Um, but, but I was just saying, you know, it's, it's easy to um, get sucked into what everybody else's expectation of motherhood is. It's hard to be true to yourself. And you know what? This whole experience that I've been through this last two years has really been about stripping away. You know, you talk about heat and light or, or he, uh, heat and pressure. I've been under more heat and more pressure in the last two years than I have in my whole life. But what's great is I'm better now. I'm faster, stronger, shinier. Um, but I'm, the essence of me is still here, but I'm, you know, I, I just have feel like I have so much more depth um, having gone through those hard times. Hard times are, you know, Glenn Beck said something the other day about um, failure being a stepping stone to success. Not that I felt like I was a failure, but those are the things that sort of um, burnish you and make you um, – Better. I, I, I keep saying better, but I don't know another word to, to improve, new and improved. Um, <laughs> but you have to go through that. And I say to people, as, as difficult it is, as it is, you, know, you shouldn't fear hard times. Yes, they suck, quite frankly. But you have to know that on the other end, you're gonna, you, you will come out on the other end, and you will be better for them. And that's how I feel. Honestly, I say that with complete honesty in my heart. What an interesting – I'm not ready to end, but what an interesting conversation this has been. We started talking about your skirt blowing up and, and your backside <laughs> being exposed in, in Manhattan, uh, and we, 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 come, we come near the conclusion with uh, you quoting Glenn Beck, of all people. I, what an it's interesting very, day. It's very self-helpish, isn't it, this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I, was, I was kind of putting the acronym together, and I was thinking, okay, good enough dad, Jed, great. I sound like a hillbilly. I think I'll pass. Um, <laughs> that's not going to work, is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Now, maybe we can kind of finish up here. Um, what's the difference between a good enough mother and a great mother? And, and which was your own mother? Mm-hmm. Uh, my own mother was a good enough mother. But you have to understand, good enough mothers are great mothers because they understand the difference between the stuff that really is important and the stuff that really can sort of be washed off in the shower. Um, I, you know, 
what I do, what the the difference really, the distinction is good enough mothers versus you know super moms or the perfect parents. Those are the ones who are trying to make you know do, do it by the book. They're you know they're not making any mistakes. And I feel like listen, you know, as you're you're a dad, you know this that your children watch you, and if you put this completely unattainable goal out there, how is that going to make them feel? My children need to see me make mistakes. They need to see me make mistakes. They need to see me be vulnerable. They need to see me cry, except when they make me cry. Um, yes. <laughs> um, but they need to see all those things because they need to know that I am doing the best I can. And I t- that's the same message I give them. Do your best, and your best will have to do. It was the same message I got from my mom, and it stuck with me all these years. That's it. That's all I have to offer is my best. And if it doesn't work, as in the case with CBS, my best clearly wasn't good enough for them, then, you know, you pack up your bag and you leave. But but it doesn't mean that you check out. You you just move on to something else, and, and that's what I'm doing. Well, um, folks, you can catch Renee Seiler co-hosting uh, BET's live TV coverage of Barack Obama's presidential inauguration on January 20th. Uh, you can also order her book at bookstores everywhere or on MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com. And, of course, check out her Facebook page where she's creating a whole industry for herself. Uh, and, of course, her uh, website, which is uh, excuse me, www.GoodEnoughMother.com. It's all solid, GoodEnoughMother.com. I'm assuming everyone can spell enough. I'm not going to spell it for you. <laughs> it's um, not E-N-U-F. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. Okay. Now you've given it away. You know. Uh, listen, Renee. Uh, it was a. It was a. It was a great hour. Uh, I, I, I uh, had a good time. You have a wonderful sense of humor, and uh, um, I, uh, I. You know, I'll be thinking about you during the inauguration. Thank you and, so uh, much. This has been good great. Luck with the new show. Thank, Thank you, very you much. so much. When we sell the show, I'll come back on and we'll talk about it. That would be terrific. I'd love to have you. All right. Take care, Bob. Right. Thank you. All right, Renee. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. And, uh, folks, for uh, more great TV-related interviews, surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with the stars of My Name is Earl, uh, Worst Week, Top Chef, Chuck, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and many more. Please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, Pointer Online, Digital Journal, Podcast Pickle, Vox, Folio, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, or Odeo. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen in certain places with a piece of string and a tin can, my wife made me add that. <laughs> if you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman, A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N dot com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thank you so much for joining us today. I always appreciate it when you give up a little bit of your day to spend it with us. Come back real soon, everybody. Bye-bye.